started with the meeting. Um, Nathan, can you advance to the next slide? Thanks. Um, so hi everyone, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us again. Um, my name is Anita Gantinani. I'm a program manager in the planning department, and I'm gonna be helping to facilitate today's community forum. Um, this is a repeat community forum um, from last Thursday's meeting. So um, if you attended the last meeting, this is the same content from uh, the presenter's perspective. We will be offering interpretation services at today's meeting for our Spanish listeners. Um, we are now enabling the interpretation function. So at this time, we ask everyone to choose your language by clicking on the interpretation button on the bottom right of your screen um, as shown here. That should pop up the option to choose either English or Spanish. Um, and if you're joining via the Zoom smartphone app, you can select your language by clicking more or the three dots in the bottom right corner of your screen, then select language interpretation, and then choose your language and click done. So um, I really wanna emphasize that you must choose a language even if you want to default to English. Um, again, if you want to listen in English to fully participate in this meeting, you must choose English as the language selection now. Um, defaulting to no choice will interrupt your listening and participation experience. So please choose your language now. Um, ahora en español, hay servicios de interpretación al español para la reunión de hoy. Por favor, elija el idioma en el que desea participar en la reunión haciendo clic en el icono de globo terráqueo que aparece en el ángulo interior de su pantalla. Todos participantes deben elegir inglés o español para participar plenamente en la reunión. Gracias. Um, so with that, planning department staff has a presentation to share more about Blueprint SD today. And when they're finished, we will open it up for comments and questions. Um, and we will be recording this community forum to share on our webpage later for anyone interested who wasn't able to attend. Next slide, please. So to keep it simple today, we're going to ask everyone to use the chat function, um, which you see here. If you want to share a comment during the presentation, please use the chat function to share your comment and we'll be downloading those to capture those comments at the end of today's meeting. Next slide. Since we're on the webinar functionality of Zoom today, all the participants have been muted. If you wish to ask a question or state a comment for our presenters, there's no need to raise your hand or use the Q&A function. Um, you can just type your first and last name into the chat and we will call on interested speakers in the order in which we've received your name at the end of the presentation. At any time, if you'd like to share a comment, again, please feel free to do so via the chat box. Um, so with that, I will pass it over to Planning Director Mike Hansen to give an, introdu an introduction about Blueprint SD. Thank you, Anisha, and good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Hansen, Director of the Planning Department. And this evening, we look forward to discussing with you a new initiative called Blueprint San Diego. This is part of Mayor Gloria's comprehensive Homes for All of Us and Our Climate, Our Future programs. Blueprint San Diego is a proposal for community planning and the city's general plan to further align them with our housing, climate, mobility, and equity goals. This is a citywide effort to take a proactive, forward-looking, and data-informed approach to our land use planning. There is a great deal of change occurring at the state, regional, and local levels in the housing and climate space. And we need to ensure that we're planning for local land uses, infrastructure, and public spaces in a way that complements state and regional efforts. And in particular, we're seeking to support and implement the transportation plan of our regional planning agency called Five Big Moves through the Blueprint Initiative. Blueprint also will allow us to complete community plans in a more simplified and expedited manner. 
Every community in our city should have a plan that is up to date and reflects current community values, not just the handful that are currently in a community plan update process or recently under uh, went one. Next slide, please. And today's uh, community forum is just the beginning of a public engagement process. So I encourage you to fully participate today and to continue to participate as we move forward. Every initiative prepared by the planning department is improved through public input. So it's critical that we hear your voice in this process. Thanks so much. And I will hand it over to program manager, Seth Lichney. Thank you, Mike. Next slide. So uh, today's presentation will include a background discussion of policy goals that have informed Blueprint SD including information on housing, transportation, environment, and equity goals. We will provide an overview of the city's general plan and its role in the process before diving into the components of Blueprint SD and how it will affect current and future community plans. We will conclude with the next steps and opportunities for additional public engagement before opening up to questions from the audience. Our speakers today include Heidi Von Bloom, Deputy Director for Environmental Policy and Public Spaces, and Tate Galloway, Program Manager for Community Planning and Implementation. Next slide. I would like to start with the documents, policies, and requirements that have played a role in the need for and preparation of Blueprint San Diego. Next slide. To ensure the needs of residents are met, the city has housing goals to plan for and develop housing. Between 2021 and 2029, the city needs over 108,000 housing units with specific targets to meet the needs of residents of different incomes. We especially need homes affordable to lower income residents as home prices and rents have continued to rise over the past several years and the housing crisis shows no sign of slowing down. In the last decade, the city missed its previous goal by 40,000 units with few units constructed for low and moderate income residents, contributing to the housing affordability crisis we face today. To fully address the needs of the community, the city must plan for and construct more housing in the future, and Blueprint San Diego will help us in that effort. Next slide. The San Diego Association of Governments, or SANDAG, is the region's transportation planning agency. In 2021, Sandag introduced a new vision for moving people and goods throughout the region. In particular, the new vision calls for more fast and equitable transit services, designing roads to accommodate more buses, carpools, and self-driving vehicles, a new set of neighborhood and electric, uh, neighborhood electric and zero emission vehicles that can expand the reach of transit users, mobility hubs where different forms of transit can be accessed, and new technology to ensure the system is efficient. This new vision sets forth a new path for how people in the city of San Diego can travel and Blueprint SD will incorporate these concepts into our processes. More information on the five big moves can be found on Sandag's SD Forward uh, website. Next slide. I'll now hand it to Heidi Von Bloom who will provide background information on the environment and equity goals of Blueprint San Diego. Thank you, Seth. Um, I, I think that I am possibly frozen. Um, for those on the panel, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, thank you. All right. I'm sorry if you can just give me one minute. Um, I, I think I have um, a delay. Um, Okay, sorry about that. Um, so um, next slide, please, Nathan. The city is currently updating its climate action plan, which was first adopted in 2015. The climate action plan identifies various strategies to reduce harmful emissions that contribute to the adverse effects of climate change and affect our daily lives. One of the areas in which the city can reduce its emissions and help to combat climate change is by transitioning the way we get around from travel by car to traveling by biking, walking, or taking transit. 
In order to see this happen, we need to ensure that we locate development in areas of the city that are most convenient to transit and to areas that will receive corresponding investments in biking, walking, and transit infrastructure. And when we plan for this intentionally, we can not only best achieve our climate goals, but we can see more active, healthy, and enjoyable communities to be enjoyed by everybody throughout our city. Blueprint San Diego will ensure that not only do we achieve our housing goals, but that we also achieve our goals in line with, achieve these goals in line with our climate goals. This means ensuring that we see critically needed housing in the right places, and that coupled with planned investments in infrastructure, will set the city up for success to achieve our vision of a walkable, bikeable, convenient, and enjoyable city to live in. Um, next slide, Nathan. And one more slide, Nathan, sorry, thank you. Ensuring that we meet both our housing goals and climate goals also helps us to achieve not only efficiency in how we deliver infrastructure, but also helps us achieve our conservation goals as well. We want to plan for infrastructure where it is needed the most and where it will be used by the most people. Development is located near transit, conveniently located to surrounding public spaces, services, employment, and other uses, facilitates the more efficient delivery of needed infrastructure, such as bike lanes, sidewalks, public spaces, and water and sewer lines as well. You can see on this slide that the same mile of a bike lane in a more activated community can serve much more people than that same mile of bike lane that is serving much fewer residents. And when we focus on delivering infrastructure where it can serve the most people, we can also best achieve our conservation goals so that we can conserve our sensitive habitat that is home to hundreds of sensitive plant and animal species and that provides opportunities for passive recreation for our residents as well. Next slide. In order to comprehensively plan for and invest in the climate friendly thriving communities we want to see in our city, we need to be able to have up-to-date plans that reach each of our communities across the city. A focus of Blueprint San Diego is to provide housing opportunities across the entire city in every community so that everyone has a blueprint for their community. The community plan for Skyline Paradise Hills was last updated before many of us were even alive. Meanwhile, other often more affluent neighborhoods have received attention to their needs while communities such as our mid cities communities have been ignored. While this reality has occurred for many reasons, one of those reasons is definitely that the traditionally underserved communities have not had the privilege of having the resources to advocate for the needed community plans. Each of the uncolored areas on this map represents communities with out of date community plans. With Blueprint San Diego, we can pave the way for each community throughout the city to get the attention it needs rather than waiting around for a lifetime to see this happen. Next slide, please. And the way that we engage in our planning also needs to be more intentional, more meaningful, and more equitable. This means that our engagement needs to be truly representative of the city's diverse population. When we hone in on the core issues that truly affect our communities, we can reach more people and engage in more meaningful ways. We are also focused on working with the city's traditionally underserved communities to ensure that we conduct our outreach in a way that is the most effective, convenient, and meaningful for those communities. I'll now pass it over to Tate Galloway, Program Manager in the Planning Department. Thanks, Heidi. In this section, I'll be talking about the city's general plan. Next slide, please. The general plan was comprehensively updated by the City Council in 2008. It's a constitution for development within the city. The general plan provides a broad, citywide, long-range vision, as well as a foundation for de decisions that affect the land use, as well as mobility. It provides a comprehensive slate of citywide goals and policies. The general plan contains 10 topic areas, which are also referred to as elements. Since its adoption, the general plan has been amended four times to address new issues. The general plan itself is a document that's designed to be comprehensively updated, but yet also to be amended as new issues arise throughout its course of its implementation. The general plan contains the City of Villages, which is a smart growth strategy that focuses new development into mixed use, 
pedestrian friendly districts, which are referred to as villages, which are often served by transit. And this is done rather than developing in open space areas. The general plan update did not include land use designations or zoning changes. That is the purview of the city's community plans, which I'll be addressing in the next section. Next slide, please. In this section, I'll be addressing our city's community plans and the roles they play. Next slide, please. Community plans work together with the general plan to provide location-based policies and recommendations in the city's 50 plus community planning areas. Community plans refine the general plan's citywide policies, as well as designating land use and housing densities. They also identify mixed-use transit-oriented districts, or as I said before, villages. They do address public facility needs, including infrastructure, as well as provide additional on-site um, specific design guidance. Together, the general plan and the community plans seek to guide future growth and development to achieve a city and to achieve both city and community level goals. Next slide. As Heidi mentioned, the current community plan update process can be a long process. Currently, it can take up to five or more years to complete. This typically includes over 30 or even 40 meetings with the subcommittee of the community planning group to identify a number of things. Primarily, in the first part of the process, it's existing conditions as well as needs with the vision with later on with goals and policies for the future, including concepts for both for including concepts for mobility, urban design, recreation, and land use. Often staff will be works with a, um, a consultant team to prepare various studies, reports, and surveys, which help along uh, the way to support the process. Ultimately, the draft community plan is analyzed with an environmental impact report, often referred to as an EIR, and presented to the Planning Commission and City Council for final approval. And with the next slide, I'll go ahead and pass this back to Seth. Thanks, Tate. I will now describe the components of Blueprint San Diego before we dive into how it will be used in the future. Next slide. First, Blueprint will, SD will include revisions to the general plan. As Tate discussed, the general plan sets the vision for the built and unbuilt environment, and Blueprint SD will incorporate the climate action goals and new vision for transportation into that vision. This will provide a citywide framework to guide land use changes and plan updates in each community. Next slide. We will develop the citywide framework through a data informed approach. We are in the process of completing new land use modeling that will show where housing could be located throughout the city to meet our goals for walking, biking, and transit. This model will provide the data that can be used to update community plans and achieve our goals. Next slide. In order to incorporate this new data, we need to update the general plan. The modeling being completed through Blueprint SD will show how the five big moves and climate action plan are being addressed in the general plan. The map on this slide was used in the 2008 general plan to show where mixed use pedestrian friendly villages could be accommodated throughout the city. Blueprint SD's model will give us the new data needed to update this map with our new goals and vision for transportation. Next slide. Part of the blueprint effort will be to ensure future community plans include a high aesthetic design standard. Climate friendly communities need to be connected with green spaces, parks, and other amenities, and the buildings need to be, de be designed to encourage and accommodate walking and biking. Blueprint SD will include objective design criteria that can be used in community plans to assist in the design of neighborhoods where new growth occurs. Climate friendly communities should also be beautiful communities and Blueprint SD will help make that happen. We plan on working with architects, urban designers, and the public to develop these standards which can be used in community plan updates. Next slide. 
Blueprint SD will include an environmental impact report that will disclose the environmental effects, identify mitigation, and consider alternatives. Completing an EIR on Blueprint SD now will help it become a more useful document in the future. An EIR, once certified, can be used for future community plan updates. As community plan updates are updated, the process of preparing and addressing the environmental impacts of the plan will be covered by the analysis in the Blueprint EIR, reducing the time it takes to update a community plan. Next slide. Blueprint San Diego is funded by a grant from the State of California's Department of Housing and Community Development. The Local Early Action Planning Grant Program is intended to assist local governments in the preparation of documents that accelerate housing production to meet their housing goals. The city applied for and received a LEAP grant earlier this year and is allocating $600,000 of the grant to this effort. And now I'll hand it back to Tate to discuss the impact Blueprint SD will have on community plan updates. Thanks again, Seth. As Seth said, this section I'll be focusing on how the Blueprint San Diego will work with our um, current as well as our future community plan updates. Thank you. The city, the city is currently updating six community plans. Three of the community plans, Mira Mesa, University, as well as the Hillcrest Focus Plan Amendment to the Uptown Community Plan will be included in the Blueprint San Diego land use data analysis. These updates are currently in the land use scenario process or will be shortly in the same land use scenario process where the preferred land use concept will be selected for that community plan or focus plan amendment. We will then take the work that has been done or will shortly be completed while still getting the benefit of looking at um, citywide how these land use ch changes will be um, addressed by the climate action plan or how they'll address the climate action plan goals. The Barrio Logan and Claremont community plans are nearing completion and will proceed prior to the Blueprint San Diego process. We will have the benefit of the Blueprint San Diego data to help inform and, and further refine the college community plan land use concepts that will also be wor worked on in the near future. Next slide. The Blueprint San Diego process will update the community plan update will will update the community plan update process by looking at the timeline and condensing the update process from currently five years to what could be a two to three year process. The meeting decisions will be focused on refining land use scenarios based upon the Blueprint San Diego land use analysis. The update will still, the community plan update will still address community issues and needs, as well as identifying tailored policies, specifically addressing the land use scenarios. The discussion will focus on both in-person as well as online workshops. The focused outreach has the ability to make the, the community plan update process more accessible to more people, to, for more people to participate. This will also include additional outreach to people who are not typically involved in the planning process. One of the concerns that we've heard about the current process is the length of time does require a significant amount of time needed to invest into that process, which can detract people from participating. The current or the proposed process would be a more defined process, thereby encouraging people to be able to participate because it will be a more compact approach to focusing dialogue and discussion um, while still being respectful of the amount of time people have to volunteer in a comprehensive uh, out, um, update process. Next slide. To sum up the benefits of Blueprint San Diego, it will use a data-driven analysis before the start of a community plan update to help identify the locations and densities needed to achieve the climate plan action goals to create communities where 
people have the option to walk, ride their bicycles, or take transit between home, work, school, and their shopping trips for some or majority of their trips. The community plan update will be faster with more focused dialogue, which can increase community plan or community participation in the planning process. Finally, many of our community plans are, are 20 years or older, as Heidi had mentioned, and Blueprint San Diego will allow for more community plans to be updated, especially those that are, are desperately in need of that which will result in plans for housing, public space, and public facilities, including infrastructure. And now I'll turn it back over to Seth. Next slide, please. I'd like to conclude today's presentation with our public engagement timeline. It's important to note, as Mike did at the beginning, that today's workshop is the start of our engagement for Blueprint San Diego. Our, as our modeling and data become available to view, and as we begin working on beautiful San Diego, we will provide opportunities for residents to learn about and weigh in on the Blueprint components. We are planning additional workshops that will cover these topics, and we will reach out to stakeholder groups to update them on Blueprint. Next year, we will have draft documents available for review and public comment, followed by planning commission, committee, and city council hearings. Once adopted, Blueprint SD will be able to be utilized for, the, for use in the accelerated community plan process uh, Tate described. We are looking forward to working with you and other community members to ensure Blueprint SD is, is developed in a way that meets our goals and becomes a successful part of our community planning process. This concludes our presentation and I will hand it over to Anisha for the question and answer portion of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. Um, so like I stated at the beginning of the meeting, if you would like to ask a question out loud or state a comment, um, we ask that you please type your first and last name into the chat box and we will unmute people to speak in the order in which we receive your name. Um, when speaking, if you can please limit your question or comment to about two minutes, then we can make sure um, we're able to hear from as many people as possible tonight to collect this initial feedback. Um, and again, if you'd like to just share your comment in the chat box, but you do not wish to speak, um, we will be downloading those comments. So feel please feel free to type your comments into the chat box directly um, or type your name if you would like to speak. Okay, I see Pat Sexton. So I'm gonna take you off mute here. Pat, you should be able to speak. Good evening. Yes, I, I have. Uh, four items I'd like to make statements. Um, one is, most recently, I've seen various departments at CPC meetings present something uh, to the CPC group with such short notice before it goes to the planning commission that the uh, chairs cannot get the information back to the community planning groups before it goes to the planning commission or land use that's one i'd like to see i'd like to see enough time to allow the chairs to get back to their groups so that the public can become informed my second one is have you ever thought of manufactured homes being a, a building a community on excess city land they're a whole lot cheaper than stick built homes they make them in duplexes they make them two story um, it's, a, it's a much, much cheaper way to go, and they're built on steel frames. Uh, they're a, a very sound housing. That's number two. As far as climate action is concerned, in my opinion, until we have cars that are registered to people in other states or, or coming across the border every morning, until all those cars are smogged, we're just kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. And San Diego and California residents are getting penalized because our numbers are up, our climate action and, and 
gases are, are up, but we can't help those that are not smog. We, I don't think, I think that the state of California should make everybody be smogged if they're gonna be in California. And number four, um, the North Park Planning Committee does not routinely attend the CPC meetings. So North Park Public gets very little input on things that directly impact our community. We see map waivers and none of the things you've talked about. We Everything is ministerial in North Park. Um, D District 3 is really in the dark until you know something like this comes up and then then we see it but it, i see it and maybe two or three other people from north park see it but we'd like to have our north park community planning chair inform the group the the public and i don't know what we need to do in order to make that happen but tate perhaps you can can help with that or mike hansen can help with that and that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Nisha, I, I think I can make a comment just on the, the housing on city sites. Um, as part of the Homes for All of Us proposal, uh, one of the things we'll be taking a look at is the city's uh, land development code and um, trying to find a way to streamline the development and ensure that it can happen on city-owned sites. Um, and I think the uh, the suggestion of uh, some of the housing types that you've mentioned um, is something that, that certainly could be considered on those sites, but it is, um, as far as building on city sites, it's something that's a part of this overall initiative, even if it's not directly a part of Blueprint San Diego. And, and I can say, Pat, I, I heard you, I took down a note and uh, certainly happy to uh, talk with the community planner for North Park and reach out to the chair and encouraging that maybe looking at an alternate for meetings that the chair may not be able to attend. Um, okay, so Darn Wood, I think maybe you have a question. Um, so I'm gonna take you off of me in case you wanna elaborate. Yes, I just noticed on your map of uh, of the different communities and the dates or the or the status of their community plans. You pointed out the ones in white either don't have currently don't have a community plan or their community plan is decades old. And I noticed the two of the areas are Point Loma and La Jolla. So. Are those going to be two of the first community plans? You're going to take a hard look at updating when this gets underway? I can take that one, Don. Thank you for the question. Uh, so right now, we don't have a sequence or a, a next up, per se, of the future community plans. But the reason that we're doing this initiative, or one of the reasons, is to make sure that we have every community that has a plan that reflects current values of the community and is up to date. Uh, Point Loma and La Jolla are two of the communities that have um, plans that are fairly out of date. And of course, we would like to be updating those at some point to make sure that they're reflective of current community and city values. Uh, but right now we don't have any, you know, next community, uh, you know, in mind for what we would take on next for a focus on this blueprint initiative. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. So it looks like Melanie Cohn has a question in the chat. Um, is there a plan as part of Blueprint SD or other citywide initiatives to revisit the prime industrial land map? I can address that. Um, as part of our community plan updates, one of the policies in the general plan is to look at that. So for instance, um, we did that with Kearney Mesa um, and we currently are evaluating that as part of our updates to um, 
the university community plan and the um, Mira Mesa community plan. So it is something that we do look at. We look at change of conditions and to see if it's still applicable or not. Okay, um, there's a question from Carleen, I believe in the chat. Um, maybe this is for Seth. Uh, is the focus for trolley stations to promote mixed use and parking garages rather than housing only? If there's too much housing by the stations, I imagine ridership would go down um, since people wouldn't just take it from one apartment to another. Um, will there be room for future trolley expansions and added lines um, or maybe extra rails for an express line for long for a long distance due to the large amount of stops? Sure, and I think I can address this by uh, pointing back to Sandag's uh, regional uh, transportation plan. And a big part of what went into that plan was to take a look at the data of where people live and where they work and really try to connect those with um, uh, future rail uh, extensions. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at their website and see the, the transit network that they've proposed. Um, I think the idea is that um, we do wanna maximize ridership and make sure that the transportation system uh, is getting people to where they, they generally travel the most and to and from work uh, is a, a big part of that. Um, I agree with you that um, some uh, locating certain different uh, uses around trolley stations would also be important. Um, and that's where we have the community plan update process where we can uh, take a deeper dive into, you know, what, what land uses should be around the, the stations and how can they uh, most effectively be used. Um, I think Blueprint sets us up to uh, include uh, an amount of density that goes with that, but also to take a look at uh, other ways for people to, to walk and bike, uh, as well as take some tran transit ridership. So um, I, I will say that our, our uh, data-driven approach is taking a look at uh, the need for housing with this new transit uh, system that Sandag is proposing. Um, so it will be uh, taking into account the, the future transit stations that, that uh, will need to be built uh, as part of that process. And I would just add that both uh, uh, MTS as well as the North County Transit District both have programs that they're looking at um, focusing mixed use development or development um, on their transit station properties that they have, but they are doing that with understanding to balance the need of commuter parkings, parkers in, in addition to uh, looking at uh, um, encouraging transit-oriented development. Um, okay, so I don't see any other names in the chat, but um, we'll hold a few moments if there might be other questions or comments or people who want to speak. Um, if you do want to speak again, please type your first and last name into the chat and then we will go ahead and unmute you. Um, okay, so Madison, let's see. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Um, Madison Coleman, policy advocate with the Climate Action Campaign. Um, thank you for uh, your presentation, really helpful. Uh, I, have, I have two things. They're more uh, recommendations than, than questions, but um, as you shared, Blueprint SD is, is required to prepare an environmental impact report, um, which means that is, it's, it's CEQA qualified um, and legally binding document. Um, and so we want to reemphasize that uh, for Blueprint SD to function meaningfully, um, each measure and alternative in the plan must be enforceable, um, specific, and, and contain clear requirements um, under law. And then the, the second uh, kind of item that I want to point out is that we want to emphasize how critical mode share data is to ensuring the city can plan and meet its legally binding cap transportation goals. Um, unfortunately, the city has a long pattern and practice of not disclosing community specific, specific mode shift 
uh, projections to uh, community planning groups um, and the community in general until the very end of a CPU process. Um, and communities must have this information early on in the planning process to um, make informed and fact-based decisions. And so we, we recommend uh, Blueprint SD um, to facilitate that. that. Um, thank you. Robinson, um, second, there might be another question for you in the chat from Don Wood. Um, Don is asking, how much do you plan on working with SANDAG, MTS, and Caltrans to ensure that the zoning and land use planning will be carefully coordinated with their transportation infrastructure planning? I think the answer is we plan on working very closely with them. Uh, one of the major goals of our of Blueprint SD is to, if, if SANDAG is working on the transit side of all this, we need to be working on the land use side. And so there needs to be close coordination into the, uh, the, the, the schedule that SANDAG has for improvements and how um, we can ensure, uh, and one of the advantages that Blueprint gives us is some flexibility to uh, uh, work on uh, updating some land use, uh, make some land use changes in places that may be uh, coming online sooner or or faster, um, so the the, the improved uh, community plan update process uh, will let us um, be able to um, you know be very closely aligned with uh, their development schedule and ensure that we have uh, the proper land uses in place before uh, the construction of a of a transit expansion is complete. See, Craig Jackson would like to speak, so I'm going to take you, take you off mute. Um, Thank you. Uh, what I would like to comment about is the Mira Mesa community plan and the transportation challenges that exist. At the moment in the Mira Mesa area, we have Miramar Road, we have Mira Mesa Boulevard, and then we have other I'll call them shortcuts that are taken by people who live within the community. There are areas that uh, are essentially uncovered so far in the Mira Mesa community plan update that have been described. And some of these are areas that make it totally impossible to get to any sort of transit hub without actually additional transportation. Uh, it is two miles, for example, in many places to the nearest transportation hub. Uh, an example would be areas along Cali Cristobal, for example. And this would be uh, something that needs to be developed and considered. Another example is that we have two major building projects, three routes and uh, Stone Creek, which is still in the future, three routes is under construction. And we have a section of Carmel, a road that uh, needs to be completed between 805 and Camino Santa Fe. I understand that it's now under consideration, but unless uh, that consideration is accelerated in some way, there will be tremendous additional traffic problems in getting to those two new developments. I call those to your attention here because we do it at every meeting and yet have been disappointed in the responses and commitments that have been received. Thank you. Um, I I think we already heard from Craig. So I'm going to go to Mario. Oh, someone correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. Um, I'm going to go to Mario, um, who would like to speak. So I'm going to unmute you, Mario. OK, Am I? can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. Hard to tell where the unmute button is anymore. OK, um, yes, I got a transfer, uh, transit kind of question. Um, one is somewhere in all of this planning, whether it's San Diego, State of California, locally, we keep talking about transit oriented um, areas or, and it's supposed to be within a half a mile of a bus stop. I, I 
over the years, that definition, you know, that specific definition has really changed a lot in that, not the definition, but what it really is. And I'd like to see that in bold letters somewhere in these plans so that we're all talking about the same thing because it really varies from community to community. I mean, there's a lot of places with canyons, but your maps all show it's a half a mile, but it's really probably a mile and a half to get to a transit stop. Uh, that's just one instance. Uh, but, and you know, maybe 20 years from now, people half a mile will be easy to walk. And then you got to walk another quarter of a mile to the tramp, to the station along the street. So, I mean, there's a lot of bugs in that. And what is really a transit stop? Is it one little bus that goes by every half hour? Or is it something, a trolley station? And there's a lot of in between. And it's very, very, it looks black and white to you guys. But when the builders get a hold of it and you got a plan checker there, that it's not black and white anymore. It's going to vary. That, that's one part. Second part is San Diego has a very ambitious plan, plans for the future. And this is a stretch over 40 years. Um, so my question is, all this building is going to happen a lot faster than 40 years. And that's one. And then two, um, that has a, that, that the San Diego has a really uphill battle to get all this transit approved. It might happen, it might not happen. Um, what's the plan? What are all the, these local the, uh, city plans for building uh, like you do on this one? What's going to happen to these if San Diego's not able to build what they think they're building and what you're basing all of your um, uh, building on? Is that going to, you're still going to build it all out? whether the transit happens or not. Okay, I'll be quiet. I think I can try to address the, the transit portion. Um, you know, I think part of what we have to rely on is the plans that are going forward right now with a, um, an idea that uh, this is a long range process. We are talking about long range uh, planning and land uses here. Um, and if there are adjustments that need to be made, again, we will have already done the, the citywide analysis. Um, so it's, it's a matter of amending that analysis as, uh, as things might change. Um, I don't anticipate that to happen uh, in the immediate future. Um, but again, I think by doing a citywide analysis, by uh, using it for our community plan updates to start matching the land uses with the transit improvements, um, we're at least in a position where um, we have uh, the ability to uh, move forward with that type of transit-oriented development that's needed uh, to meet our goals. Um, again, as we, uh, I, we can't anticipate every uh, change that comes along the way, but uh, at least having a citywide analysis, we can uh, fall back on and, and see what type of changes would, um, uh, would need to occur and how we can uh, address those changes as they come up. Tate, did you have something to add? Yeah, I would just add to the question or the comment about um, whether a half mile is feasible or not. And certainly understanding that San Diego has a topography, which in some cases, depending if you live in a canyon or you live on a hill, uh, you may not have the ability to walk a, a half a mile. But that also is intended to cover bicycle trips as well as um, micro mobility, which really focuses on smaller and even in the potential um, electric or a, a semi or fully autonomous vehicles that really do have the opportunity of, of being able to serve a little bit wider of an area and covering that, that half mile or even greater. So um, it's really, as Seth said, looking more towards the future and, and, and looking at how future transit can serve that. And it certainly is looking not just as um, in order to focus qualifying as a transit or major transit stop, it's two high frequency lines that serve an area, um, not just uh, a single route or just simply a bus stop, but it's really a more of a node that has two or more high frequency lines as a focus for uh, really um, nodes or what we refer to as transportation priority areas. Thanks, Tate. Um, I think Richard Diaz was next to speak, so I'm going to take you 
uh, off of mute, Richard. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think Mr. Lichney answered my question, so maybe I just need clarification on this. I'm interested in SANDAG's regional transit plan and also MTS's transportation inf infrastructure planning. So my understanding from amending the analysis means that if MTS comes in strong and says, we want to put in a facility in this location, but it's not zoned for this activity, then city planning will change the land use to fit the plans? No, not necessarily. I think I was, I was taking it maybe a, a step higher and saying if there were, uh, I, the question was about if Sandag were to be able to fund all of the uh, projects that it has proposed in the regional transportation plan, if it weren't able to fund all those projects, what would we be able to do? And so we would be able to take a look at our analysis and say, all right, what happens with this new, uh, with this change and how can we um, uh, take a look at what type of land use changes would need to go along with it to ensure that we're still meeting our goals. I don't think it would be as direct as saying a specific spot of land um, would be uh, available or not available for, for a transit stop. Oh. Um, so. Am I still on? Uh, did you have another question? No, no, I don't. Okay. I, I don't see, I don't see uh, unmute yeah, or mute. Yeah. yeah, we can put you back on mute. Okay. <laughs> um, so again, we were hoping everyone can um, either type your comments into the chat, which we'll be saving, or if you'd like to speak, put your name in the chat. But I do see, looks like Deborah Knight has a question or a comment. So I'm going to take you off of mute, Deborah. Hi, thank you. Hi, Kate. <laughs> uh, my name is Debbie Knight. I'm on the uh, University Community Plan Update Committee, which has been meeting for uh, the better part of three years now. So um, I have a dim view of this process, as I think Tate already knows. So um, just the list of issues is we've been working on looking at focus areas and different development levels for three years. And all of a sudden, the city is just kind of like overriding that and literally throwing development at the wall, as far as I can see doesn't seem like planning at all to me. It's like, how about this too much? Or how about even more too much um, to be like downtown Man Manhattan? And at the same time, in another piece of the plan, they want to take out road lanes so they can add protected bike lanes, which is something I completely support. But you're vastly increasing the development. You're already have bad traffic. Now you're taking away road, which is a good idea. And there's no plan to actually pay for the protected bike lanes that are supposed to be, which are the basis for doing any mode shift to biking, because right now it's deadly to bike in the area. And there's almost no protected uh, bike infrastructure. So whenever we say, well, where, when are the bike lanes gonna happen? We see you're throwing density at the wall and want it to happen, you know, as soon as you, you know, approve the plan, it's open season, but oh, that it's a different department that's planning the bike lanes. So that we don't, we won't know about that until well after the plan is approved. So this doesn't seem like planning to me. It just seems like, oh, you know, we want this and we want that. We also have no, no affordable housing in our very little affordable housing, re, affordable restricted housing. I would like to see uh, considerably more. I would like to see middle income, naturally affordable housing. And I don't think we'll get any of that. Certainly not for families. Maybe you'll get a micro unit or something that's so-called, you know, middle income affordable. But I, I don't see this as planning a wonderful city. I see it as throwing density at the wall 
and to hell with everything else. And I, I just, I'm deeply, deeply disturbed by this. I, I care about this area a lot. I care about the city. I care about having a place where people of different incomes and kinds of families can live. I care about having a place that has bike infrastructure. And I don't see any of that happening in this. I just see, you know, build, 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 baby, build. And it's just deeply, deeply disappointing to me uh, about uh, how the city is going about this. That's my piece. Well, that's a piece of my piece. I just comment real quickly and say we certainly understand and I know uh, Debbie I've heard your comments uh, certainly participating in the workshop and or the um, subcommittee meetings and thank you for your participation and volunteering and giving your time throughout the plan update process and your voice has certainly been uh, heard and, and brought up on a number of issues so thank you for all that time you, you've given to this. Um, and as we explained in, in the last meeting, I think even the prior ones, that um, we will be addressing issues dealing with affordable and middle income housing coming up. And certainly one of the bigger questions is always funding. And we will be looking at infrastructure as part of the plan update process um, as we continue to go forward. So I know we, uh, we, we you have some issues you've raised, and we certainly are going to uh, do our best to address those moving forward in, in the process. So thank you again for your comments. Thanks, Tate. Um, so we'll wait a few more moments if there might be additional um, attendees tonight who want to speak um, or who would like to make a comment in the chat. Um, please feel free to write your first and last name into the chat if you would like to speak and we will unmute you. Um, okay, not seeing comments. Um, Ethan, if you could advance to the next slide. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so um, with that, we again really appreciate everyone's participation this evening. Um, again, we are saving all the information that we gathered through the chat and through our discussion here to inform your efforts and engagement. Um, if you have other suggestions for us, there is a comment portal um, at the bottom of the web page listed here, which is sandiego.gov forward slash blueprint SD. We will also be posting future workshops and engagement opportunities um, to that webpage. So again, we really appreciate you joining today's discussion and hope you have a great rest of your evening. <laughs>